Let's go to line two where Brad Cabana is waiting. How are you tonight, sir? Hi, Pete. I'm great. How are you doing? Very good. Uh, all kinds of topics here tonight, I must say. Yeah, well, I, that's actually, uh, yeah, I'm not actually great. Actually, I'm, I'm really kind of upset because I just found out this evening that uh, you were talking about on your on your rant there about uh, Michael Johansson, mm -hmm. uh, the award-winning journalist uh, who does articles and did, uh, used to do articles on the Labrador and the Aurora, uh, doesn't anymore apparently because uh, he was given the ultimatum to stop writing about the government of Newfoundland Labrador and Nalcor, and he refused, and they immediately cancelled his column. Yeah, I was just reading on his uh, Facebook page here the statement that he specifically had up there. Uh, if I can find it again, here it is. And uh, this is exactly what he put out himself. Uh, Award-winning columnist Michael Johansson has been cut from the Aurora and Labradorian after the editor of these two papers uh, tried to impose restrictions on the subject matter uh, she would permit to be printed. When Johansson objected, the to the blanket restriction on writing about Alcorn, the government of Newfoundland and Labrador, his column was terminated outright. So presumably if he's not writing for them, and that was exactly who he's writing for, and then it was getting shared by the other uh, papers associated, then we won't be seeing any more columns from Mr. Johansson. I really, I don't know that for sure, but, um, you know, there's some, you know, it raises some questions, frankly. Like, one question that come, came to my mind immediately is, why would uh, that editor uh, want to impose restrictions on on what you know on his writing on the government of Newfoundland and Labrador and Nelcor? I mean, it's not I, I, you know it, it, it begs the question: who is putting pressure on who to get him off to get him um, from refraining to do that writing? You know, I mean, he, he, uh, it defies common sense to think that the, that transcontinental media and, and and the Aurora and or whomever are going to just one day out of the out of the blue decide that he can't write about the government now for anymore. That's you know the big I mean? question. Who who? Where's it coming from? Is it coming uh, from the editor who thinks that perhaps he's just doing it uh, too often, that it's not interesting for the readers, or does she think he has a personal vendetta that goes beyond uh, good journalism, I suppose? Is it the uh, owners of the newspaper, and if so, is it uh, from you know pressure from the government? There's all these questions. Chances are we're not going to find that out, but anybody being muzzled in that way is is going to raise an awful lot of hackles and uh, will not go down easily. Well, yeah, and I mean, it, it's outrageous. I mean, we just celebrated, or celebrated, maybe the wrong word, but we just observed Remembrance Day, where, you know, my father and, and many other people's fathers and grandfathers went overseas to defend our right to have a free society. And a day or two afterwards, this gentleman who, who is, is writing his own editorial uh, is is his his editorials canceled because he's criticizing the government and Alcor? It's outrageous, and, and I frankly think that that the government. I'd like to hear a member of the government come on and deny that they have any responsibility for what happened here, because I it just makes no sense that the that that newspaper would have put a can on him specifically in Labrador. Uh, without any pressure from this government, I just don't believe it because it just doesn't make any sense. Why would they? Well, I can tell you that on any subject, I mean, it would be deemed highly objectionable uh, for uh, you know columnists to be dictated to or told what he can't write about. But on this particular subject, especially uh, given, as you say, he's writing in Labrador about something happening in Labrador, uh, I just think that this is not going to go well for the uh, decision makers, whoever they might be. And, and it's not just about Muscat Falls he was, he was told he couldn't write about. It was about anything to do with the government of Newfoundland and Labrador and or Nalcor. So it could have been on any subject to do with the government of Newfoundland and Labrador. And I just Well, don't that's the implication of what's on his Facebook page yeah. here, but uh, how specific that is uh, well, I, I mean, we can only go by what we we have here, and that's how we that's how he put it. He is a writer, so we assume that's what it means. Yeah. Perhaps Michael would come on the air. I certainly, if he's listening to the show, which yeah. I don't know if he has or isn't, but if he is, I sure wish he would come on the air and, and tell us what happened. And so, you know, we get to the bottom of it. I was trying to contact him. I don't have a direct line, but uh, if anybody does and can uh, let him know that we'd love to hear from him, uh, whether or not he's interested at this point, who's to say? But uh, in any event, I'm going to send him a uh, uh, another message here from another route I have so and see if we can uh, make contact. But listen, right up, uh, thanks for your uh, words on this. Okay, thanks, Pete. Have a good night. You too. All the best.
Brad Cabana there speaking on that uh, particular story. Yeah, this is uh, something new, not something uh, you hear about. Uh, I don't know if I've ever hear, heard about this in this particular province. That might say more about my uh, naivete, I suppose, than anything else. But uh, it, it certainly is a, a rare thing, uh, at least rare for it to get out in public like this. 